Well, hello, Internet. You guys seem to really like the last video I did on the United States economy, so today I'm going to explain the United States financial crisis. By the end of this video, you're going to understand derivatives, collateralized debt obligations, and credit default swaps, and a whole bunch more. Believe me, this stuff really isn't that complicated, and you should never trust someone who says that something is complicated as you hand them your money. Derivatives were simply created to help banks, investors, corporations manage risk. It's just simply a financial arrangement between two groups, and a person would buy a derivative so that they have have the option to buy an investment at a set price in the future, no matter what happens to that investment, whether the price increases or what have you, they can still purchase it at that set price by buying the derivative. These items commonly are commodities, corporate bonds, currencies, government debt, interest rates, mortgages, stocks, etc. Here's a really simple example. Let's say you go to the coffee shop with your buddy and you don't have your wallet. Your buddy says, fine, I will buy you a cup of coffee today for $1 and in exchange the next time we meet, you will buy me a cup of coffee no matter what the price is. The only difference between that situation and what goes on on Wall Street is contracts are signed. So if a cup of coffee costs $2 in the future, you just saved yourself a dollar by buying that cup of coffee or spending that dollar this day. Another example is with airlines. Airlines often will go to banks and they will buy a derivative and they will say, I want to give you a certain amount of money to guarantee that I can buy fuel in the future for a hundred dollars how much do I need to pay you so that I can hedge against the risk of oil prices rising above a hundred dollars a barrel what a lot of people don't realize is that bank does not purchase that barrel of oil and hold on to it for six months they instead take on the risk that they will have to buy that barrel of oil for say hundred and fifty dollars in the future and then sell it for a hundred dollars losing fifty dollars per barrel there are two types of derivatives there the first is the option. What this just simply says is in the future, the purchaser of the derivative has the option to buy the cup of coffee, but will not be forced to do it if they do not want to do it. Then you have futures or swaps. They are identical. They're the same exact thing. And under a future or swap derivative, these two people in the future will be forced at some point in time or when some event occurs to make a transaction. The only problem with this, as you're going to see later on in the tutorial, is if these derivatives are handled in an unregulated market, there is no guarantee that the other side is actually going to fulfill the contract. Then we come to collateralized debt obligations. A CDO is just a pool of assets. In this presentation, I'm going to really focus on mortgages because that is the heart of the collapse in the stock market. To own a mortgage CDO, you pay a fixed amount of money to own a piece of the CDO. And then whenever the homeowners pay principal and interest each month, you receive a percentage of that principal and interest payment. To make it really simple, let's take it down to one mortgage. Homeowner goes to a bank, says, I want to buy this $100,000 home. In exchange, the bank says, fine, here's $100,000. Sign this contract and promise that you will pay us principal and interest until the home is paid off. Then commonly what occurs is the bank takes this agreement and sells it to an investor. And there you go. You got a collateralized debt obligation. So in essence, the homeowner is paying the investor in the CDO. The investor then, to hedge against the risk that the homeowner does not make payments or defaults on the contract, can go to a stockbroker and buy what's called a credit default swap or a derivative. And by paying the stockbroker a certain amount of money, if the homeowner defaults, the stockbroker promises to pay the investor in this derivative in the future. To further explain this, a credit default swap is kind of like life insurance. The only major difference between a CDS contract and a life insurance contract is that the life and health insurance industry markets are regulated as you can see here's cash reserves they must have money on hand to pay out if purchasers of life insurance should pass away the CDS market is not regulated see no pool of money so if the life insurance industry wasn't regulated like the CDS market this is how life insurance would work I convince you to pay me $20 a month for $100,000 payable on death I don't create a separate account from which I can someday pay your beneficiary that $100,000 you die and when your beneficiary shows up wanting the hundred thousand dollars I don't have it in this situation I would be liable for that hundred thousand dollars but that really doesn't matter now does it now on the other hand me being the person that sold the life insurance I could go to a stockbroker and say I want to buy a CDS that pays out if mr. Smith dies 
The bank would then say, okay, this is how much that would cost, and then I would be able to cover that issue. However, once again, if that broker sold me this CDS through an unregulated market, they also would not have principal to pay me. So we're back where we were before. What's worse is credit fault swaps can be sold to uninterested parties. So in this life insurance example, people that have no interest in Mr. Smith's life could actually go and pay a bank a certain amount of money. And whenever Mr. Smith dies, they would receive a payout if the bank actually has any money to pay them. So these two gentlemen on the left actually have an interest in Mr. Smith's death more than they have have an interest in Mr. Smith living. In unregulated markets, this is possible. In regulated markets like the life insurance industry, however, this is not. So there was a lot of interest in purchasing these CDOs because the payouts were great. But after a while, there were just not enough highly rated mortgages to sell. So that's where the credit rating agencies stepped in. They said that if you pull enough of these bad mortgages together, you actually lower dramatically the overall risk of any of these homes defaulting. And the credit rating agencies believed even if you had a whole bunch of bad mortgages, if you pulled enough of them together, they would actually be AAA rated. And so begins a very vicious cycle in which bankers who pay the credit rating agencies to rate their investments, pay the credit rating agency and turn bad mortgages into supposedly good AAA mortgages or CDOs. And then the banks were able to go to outside investors. And even though the investment was a triple C, for example, they were honestly able to say this is a triple A rated investment because the credit rating agencies said it was. But once again, because this was an unregulated market, whenever all these homes began to get foreclosed on and investors in the credit default swaps wanted paid because of the foreclosures, the banks did not have any money in reserves to pay out on these credit default swaps. And to show you just how bad it got, on the left, you will see the total payout amount on all credit default swaps. This means this was the total amount they were on the hook for. It equals out to $62.2 trillion. In one year, because of the financial collapse of these credit default swaps, that total payout dropped to $38.6 trillion in just one year. And as a comparison, you can see on the right side of the screen the total global gross domestic product of the entire world, which is $62.9 trillion. So on the left, you have $62.2 trillion that supposedly these banks were going to pay out, even though in an entire year, the globe could only actually pay out $62.9 trillion. Then we come to the collateralized debt obligations. In 2007, all of these collateralized debt obligations had a total value of $180 billion. In just one year, that amount fell to $20 billion. Then the banks got really creative. They actually started pulling together CDOs that were designed to fail. They went to their clients and they said, oh yeah, this CDO is really good. You should buy it. They then turned around and went to other banks and said, I want to buy credit default swaps that will pay out whenever these bad CDOs that I sold my clients fail. The bankers that they bought these credit default swaps off of of course, did not have the principal to pay out whenever these CDOs collapsed, but they didn't care about that because they expected the United States government to step in whenever this whole entire ball of wax melted. The Federal Reserve spent $2.74 trillion buying toxic assets and funding the banks after the collapse. Unregulated credit default swaps are still not regulated in the United States. Over 75% of all trades on Wall Street are actually not regulated, and no one has been punished as of today for this whole entire mess. So simply what you have to ask yourself is when it will it happen again? And to put this big payout by the Fed into perspective, on the left side of your screen right here, you see $2.76 trillion that the Fed paid out. This is the entire net worth, all assets minus all liabilities for the bottom 80% of Americans. That equals out to $4.54 trillion. So that means that the Fed paid out over 60% of the entire net worth of the bottom 80% of Americans. And here, by the way, is the total net worth of the top 19% in the United States and the top 1%, which is at $27.74 trillion. Leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.